Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel that is Mechanical Engineering. Today in this video we are going to discuss very interesting topic that is the differences between homogeneous and heterogeneous welding. So for differentiating the homogeneous and heterogeneous welding I have made two different column. The column at left hand side that is for homogeneous welding and the column at right hand side is for heterogeneous welding. So the very first point, in homogeneous welding, the chemical composition of the filler material is identical with that of parent material. Whereas in heterogeneous welding, the chemical composition of the filler metal is substantially different from that of the parent material. Okay, so let's understand this with the help of this uh, diagram. This is the process for GTAW that is gas tungsten arc welding where a non-consumable tungsten electrode is used to generate the arc and the additional filler is used. Okay, so when the composition of this filler rod, this is nothing but the filler rod. Okay, and when the composition of this filler rod is same to that of the parent metal. So this is a parent metal. This plate we want to join together. Okay. So this will form the parent metal and this is the filler rod. So when the composition of this filler rod and the parent metal is identical, then such type of welding is known as homogeneous welding. And when the composition of this filler rod is not identical or it is different from the parent metal, then it is known as heterogeneous welding. Okay, so in homogeneous welding, chemical composition of the filler metal, filler material is identical with that of the parent material, whereas in heterogeneous welding, the chemical composition of the filler material is substantially different to that of parent material. Next point, it is not possible while joining dissimilar material. So the homogeneous welding is not possible while joining dissimilar material. So as the composition of filler rod is identical with the parent material, okay, so we cannot join the dissimilar material in case of homogeneous welding. Whereas in heterogeneous welding, dissimilar metal joining is inherently a heterogeneous welding process okay so as the composition of filler material is different from the parent material so that is nothing but an inherent inherent characteristics of the heterogeneous welding next point because of the same chemical composition between the filler and the parent metal Compatibility in terms of chemical, physical and metallurgical are inherent and obvious. Okay, So in homogeneous welding we are using same filler rod. So as the material of filler rod and the parent material is same, so they are compatible with each other in terms of chemical, physical and metallurgical, uh, metallurgical ways. Okay? Whereas in heterogeneous welding, the filler metal should be chosen considering the compati compatibility issue to obtain a defect free product. So in case of uh, heterogeneous welding, what happens? The material of filler rod is different, right? So you should be very careful while choosing the material of the filler rod. It should be compatible with the parent metal. Then and then you will get a defect free product. Otherwise, Due to, uh, due to various issues, you might face some uh, defects in your welding. Next point. Melting point of the filler is same with that of the base plate. Okay. So as we are using uh, the same material filler rod, so the melting point of the filler is same with that of the parent metal or the base plate. Now heterogeneous welding. Melting point of the filler and the base plate can be substantially different and this factor should be carefully considered prior to the welding. Now in heterogeneous welding what happens? We are using the filler rod which is of different material from the base plate. So in that case its melting point might be different. Okay, And that will create some issues. So you should be very careful. You should see the melting point and on the basis of that you should choose the filler material. Next point, 
physical, chemical and the mechanical properties of the weld bead are roughly same with that of the base metal in case of homogeneous welding. So in homogeneous welding we are using same material filler rod. So the physical, chemical and mechanical properties are roughly same to that of base metal. Whereas in case of heterogeneous welding what happens we are using different material filler rod. So the properties of the weld bead can be improved to a desired level by suitably selecting a compatible filler. So here we have a choice. We can use a filler rod with higher properties and in that case we will be we will be getting uh, higher properties as compared to the base metal. Okay. So properties of the weld bead can be improved. Here we have a choice. We can improve the property of the weld bead by selecting the filler filler which is compatible and which is having a higher level okay so uh, we can produce a welding with a good quality or with a better quality then joints might be susceptible to the corrosion corrosion resistance of the joint cannot be improved by homogeneous welding so here you can see the corrosion that uh, that has taken place near the welding now in case of homogeneous welding we are using a filler with the same material so in that case we cannot increase the corrosion resistance of the uh, welded joint because we don't have a choice we have to use the electrode with the same material so as we are using an electrode with the same material we cannot increase the corrosion resistance of the welded joint Whereas in case of heterogeneous welding, the corrosion resistance of the joint can be enhanced by heterogeneous welding by employing a corrosion resistive filler. This is advantageous for the marine application. Now in heterogeneous welding, we have a choice. <coughs> we can use the electrode with better corrosion resistance properties. Okay, and that should be compatible. So in this case, we can uh, we can use the electrode with better corrosion resistance and we can improve the corrosion resistance properties of the welded joint and this is more advantageous in case of the aqueous or the marine application because in that case the welded joint is continually subjected to the corrosive environment and in that case we we want to improve its corrosion resistance next point rate of expansion or the contraction is approximately same for the molten for the molten filler and the base metal so the chance of crack formation on the weld bead is also less now in case of homogeneous welding we are using uh, the filler with the same material so its rate of expansion or the rate of contraction will be nearly same and hence we uh, and hence it is uh, it is possible to get a crack free joint okay here we can see uh, the crack which occurs over the uh, weld bead so such type of cracks uh, will not will not produced in case of homogeneous welding because the rate of expansion and contraction will be same because we are using a same filler material whereas in case of homogeneous welding what happens unequal rate of contraction between the molten filler and the base metal during solidification can lead to residual stress generation and crack formation on the weld bead. <coughs> so in case of heterogeneous welding what happens we are using a filler rod with different material. So it will have different rate of contraction and different rate of expansion. Okay. So that unequal rate of contraction between the molten filler and the base metal during solidification can lead to stress generation and because of that stress there will be a crack formation so you should be very careful while choosing the electrode for heterogeneous welding then uh, we will discuss certain processes uh, which are suitable for homogeneous and heterogeneous welding so the processes which are suitable for the homogeneous welding is SMAW that is shielded metal arc welding process then GMAW that is gas metal arc welding process and SAW that is shielded metal arc welding process these are suitable welding processes for the homogeneous welding now the processes which are suitable for heterogeneous welding is plasma arc welding process friction stir welding process and laser beam welding process 
here you can see the, those processes so the very first process which is suitable for the homogeneous welding is shielded metal arc welding process this is also known as a stick welding where the coated electrode is used for the welding purpose and the arc is generated in between that coated electrode and the base metal and the the electrode is coated with the flux material that forms the shield during the welding and it protects the weld bit from the oxidation this is a shielded metal arc welding process now the process which is suitable for plasma arc welding process uh, which is suitable for heterogeneous welding that is plasma arc welding process where Uh, this process is also similar with the GTAW that is gas tungsten arc welding process because here also we are using the electrode which is made up of tungsten but the difference is the uh, the plasma or the arc which is generated in between the electrode and the base metal that is separated from the shielded gas that is the basic difference in between GTAW and plasma arc welding process so uh, the <coughs> the plasma which is formed uh, that is get passed through the orifice and it is impinged on the metal surface here we are getting the temperature around 28 degree celsius now the next process which is uh, suitable for the homogeneous welding that is gas metal arc welding process so here you can see the gmaw process where we are using a consumable electrode and again the arc is generated in between the consumable electrode and the base metal and the electrode get deposited over the base metal and again it is shielded with the help of uh, shielded gases like uh, shielding gases like uh, co2 nitrogen argon now the process which is suitable for heterogeneous welding that is friction stir welding so here you can see the process of friction stir welding so the plate which we join together they are they are kept aligned to each other and then uh, then here in this process a rotating tool is used and then there will be a friction in between the rotating tool and the base metal which will create the heat and that heat is uh, used for welding the two plates uh, this type of welding is mostly suitable for the aluminum plates then the process which is suitable for the homogeneous welding that is submerged arc welding process here you can see the submerged arc welding process again the arc is generated in between the electrode and the base metal and then uh, the arc is submerged inside the inside the flux so here you can see the flux which is whitish in color so you cannot see the arc okay it is completely submerged inside the flux then the process which is suitable for the heterogeneous welding that is laser beam welding process so here the laser source is used uh, for generating the uh, for generating the heat okay and uh, this this type of welding is suitable for the deep and narrow welding and again we we will be getting high rate of uh, production with the help of laser beam welding it is mostly used in automobile sector so this is nothing but a basic difference in between homogeneous and heterogeneous welding thank you so much for watching my video thank you